Well, in the South Bay, at least 200 students are sick at nine different elementary schools and one middle school. As the San Jose Unified School District grapples to deal with what appears to be a norovirus outbreak. Gators Lee Martinez has more now on the warning to parents and what the school district is trying to do to stop the spread. Hacienda is the hardest hit school with 80 students reported getting sick. Now, public health hasn't determined if this is in fact the norovirus, but it does have all of the similar symptoms. So the school district is scrubbing down classrooms twice a day. The stomach illness has spread to 27 students at Horace Mann Elementary School in the past 10 days, prompting the school to clean with bleach twice a day. We want kids to stay home if they have symptoms. Uh, they need to be symptom free for 48 hours. And if kids are having any kind of stomach issues, uh, stomach pain, stomach cramping, we want them to stay home. It's believed the first stomach sickness cases surfaced at Hacienda Elementary School on May 4th when two children in the same class became sick. As of Wednesday morning, 80 students reported getting sick at Hacienda this month. It's now spread to 10 schools. Pretty much every day since uh, we've had our first cases, um, especially at Hacienda uh, Elementary, we've been doing regular uh, scrub downs with bleach solution of all of the play areas, all of the common areas, all of the classrooms where kids have reported um, illness. Uh, and we've been doing that at least once a day, if not twice a day. Um, and they were just out there last night, 6 p.m., um, doing a full clean down of that school. The San Jose Unified School District suspects it may be the norovirus, an infection that causes vomiting and diarrhea. Parents with children at Horace Mann Elementary School say the virus spread worse last year at their school and several events were canceled. Right towards the end of the school year was science camp and performances and um, it was very sad. But yes, the school also had a big norovirus outbreak. Parents hope that it doesn't come to canceling after school events and that their children can make it through the last weeks of school without getting sick. Unfortunately, it has come to that at Hacienda Elementary School. They have canceled all after school events so that this sickness does not interrupt any of their graduation ceremonies coming up. And we're told that the district will have some of the nurses come into the schools to teach children about proper hygiene. In San Jose, Lee Martinez, KTVU, Fox 2 News. For more on this uh, norovirus outbreak, I'm joined by Dr. Anarud Mishra from U.S. HealthWorks. First of all, what is norovirus exactly? It is an RNA virus. There's different types of viruses. Uh, this virus is the single most common virus of what we call gastroenteropathies, which causes nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So that's what it is, and it causes what we're seeing now in the news. So is it like getting a cold or a flu? It's just a virus that can be passed from person to person? Correct, yes. It is contagious, and um, it is transmitted uh, what we call through fecal-oral transmission. And um, uh, unclean surfaces uh, are also a, a method of transmission, which is why uh, chlorine is, a, is the best way to clean surfaces because soap and alcohol are ineffective in that way to prevent transmission. And how does it, I guess when you have a classroom, you have a lot of kids together, but this isn't just children, it affects adults as well, correct? Uh, yes, it can get anyone. And I'm just it's, wondering how it s spreads so rapidly mm -hmm. when well, you have a cluster of people, it makes sense. Uh, you hit it right on the head. Uh, so it can be on a cruise ship. Uh, it can right. be um, uh, in uh, contexts like prisons and places like that where people are uh, tightly uh, bunched in. And we hear sometimes from restaurants, uh, if somebody in the kitchen didn't wash properly, that it could be passed to a customer. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the best prevention uh, to make sure you don't get this is... Is hand hygiene. That's it? Uh, wash, soap and water clean uh, is the most effective and best preventive uh, intervention strategy for them. So if I have contact with another person who has it, uh, just making sure my hands are always clean and not touching my face, my mouth, that's kind of the bottom line? That's the best thing. Actually, further to that point, a person can still transmit this virus even up to two days post having had a full recovery. Mm. So that's important to know too, which is why it's recommended kids stay at home even upwards of two to three days after they're fully all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any other tips? You have a long list of uh, notes there. Anything that we missed? Oh, uh, just some things. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, it, because it's the most common. It's something to know that it's uh, it's uh, benign. It's uh, generally self-limited. Um, uh, care is focused really on restorative, uh, uh, what we call. Um, Self-care as it relates to dehydration. We don't sure. want kids to fall behind on their on their water. Um, that can be lead to more of a longer recovery. Right. Um, those are probably the most important things, along with what we talked about prevention. It's not fatal unless you already have some other kind of illness that could just compromise your immune system. Right, and more often it's. Um, 
something which only uh, takes two or three days to fully recover from as it is right. for that reason and um, in you know it's not generally unless you're in the third world a place where it would be uh, lethal in any way okay but it could be a miserable couple of days I'm <laughs> yeah, sure sure it can be dr. Anarud Mishra thank you for your time appreciate thank it you. appreciate it for all right for having me. Heather